Cubans. For Cuba, that suffers the first word. Cuba must become an altar for offering our lives, not a pedestal for lifting us above it. If in my country's affairs, if I were permitted to offer one benefit to everyone, one fundamental benefit to be a basic principle of all my countrymen, and without which all other benefits would be faulty and insecure. This is the one I would choose. I want the first law of our future republic to be reverence in every Cuban for the full dignity of man. One says, Cuban and a sweetness like a gentle brotherhood irrigates the heart. Here no other word so closely resembles the light of dawn. No other consolation enters our hearts with greater joy than this ardent and ineffable word, Cuban. Yeah. Must we be afraid? of the Cuban who has suffered most from being deprived of his freedom in the country for which he shed his blood. What is his love for it too great a threat? Will we be afraid of the Negro, the noble black man, our black brother, who for the sake of Cubans who died for him has granted eternal pardon to the Cubans who are still mistreating him. Well, I know black hands that have plunged further into virtue than those of any other white man I've ever met. I know, I know the black man has drawn his noble body to its full heights and is becoming a solid column in his native liberties. Others may fear him. I love him. Anyone who speaks ill of him, I disown. And I say to them, openly, you lie. <laughs> now let us form ranks. Nations are not founded by the mere hopes in the depths of a man's soul. I see before me those flags calling, beckoning, ordering. Let us rise up for the true republic. Those of us with a passion for righteousness and in the habit of hard work will know how to preserve it. Let us rise to give graves to our heroes whose spirits roam the earth in shame and loneliness. Let us rise to give our children graves and let us place around the solitary star of our flag the formula for love triumphant with all and for the good of all.